Welcome back, strangers. The worst thing that can happen to a parent is losing their child. The grieving process can cause anyone to think or do the strangest things. Imagine what you might do if you thought your child was still alive after believing they were gone forever. The roller coaster of emotions you would experience until you eventually realize it's not actually your child and that you'll never know for certain what happened to your little one. Today, we're going to discuss the strange disappearance of Pauline Picard, an unsolved case that is full of mystery, heartache, and death. In April of 1922, two-year-old Pauline Picard was playing alone outside of the family farm in gauss à la Brittany, France. The area was a small and safe community, and Pauline's mother let all of her nine children roam free on the surrounding farmland. However, when she called Pauline in for supper, she never returned. Her parents frantically searched for her, and more than 150 people from the surrounding area joined in the search for the missing girl. However, the massive search party turned up no trace of Pauline. The following month, the police informed Pauline's family that a little girl was found wandering the streets of Cherbourg, a town that was over 200 miles away. The girl matched the description of Pauline, and her parents believed it was her when the police showed them a picture of the girl. Pauline's parents traveled by train to get to their missing daughter but upon meeting her, they were uncertain if it was truly her. The girl appeared to not recognize her parents and did not speak or react to their native Breton language. The family decided to bring the girl home with them, believing that Pauline was simply malnourished and traumatized by whatever caused her to end up in the strange town far from home. Everyone in the area was happy to have little Pauline back home. Her brothers, sisters, and everyone in the community that saw the girl believed that she was Pauline. However, she didn't appear to recognize anyone except she did seem frightened of the area of the farm where she was abducted from. The police thought Pauline was abused by her kidnapper, and they searched for a mysterious woman dressed in rags that was last seen with the girl before she was rescued from Cherbourg. Despite the happy reunion with Pauline and her family, life didn't return to normal. Pauline continued acting strange, and her family began suspecting that the girl was not actually Pauline. Yves Martin, a local farmer, reacted like he had seen a ghost when he witnessed Pauline playing on the family's farm again, and asked them if they believed that she was their missing daughter. When they answered yes, he screamed, God is fair and I am guilty, as he ran away from the family's home. Two weeks after the return of Pauline, a cyclist found a badly mutilated and decomposing body of a young girl a half mile from the family's farm. The head, hands, and feet were missing but there were children's clothes neatly folded next to the body, along with the skull of a fully grown man. The clothes were later identified to be what poor little Pauline was wearing the day she went missing. Pauline's parents were stricken with confusion and grief, not knowing whether the body was Pauline's or if it and the adult skull belonged to two other people. The area the body and skull were found had been searched multiple times by the huge search party when Pauline first disappeared. However, no one reported seeing them, the police believed that the body, clothes, and skull were later moved there by the killer who wanted them to be discovered. These unusual events led to many different suspects and theories on what was going on in this small village in France. The prime suspect was the farmer who cried out, God is fair, and I am guilty. Some believe that his reaction was the result of the brain injury he suffered, with which eventually led him to be committed to an asylum. Others think that if the guilt-ridden farmer didn't kill the girl, he knew who did. A neighboring recluse told a French newspaper that Pauline had been abused by a family member and implied that her father was known to have frequent violent outbursts. Another theory is that during one of these outbursts, he went too far and killed his young girl. The family covered up the crime by saying the girl went missing and continued the charade by welcoming the strange girl from Cherbourg into their home. Those who believe this theory think the brain-damaged farmer may have witnessed Pauline's death at the hands of her father and was spooked when he thought he saw the ghost of Pauline back on the farm weeks later. The townspeople in the surrounding area believed that Pauline was kidnapped by an upper-class family to fill the void of a lost child. The body that was found was the rich family's daughter, who passed away and was around the same age as Pauline. This theory is the least likely, but it has become part of the local legend surrounding the mystery in France. Finally, there was the mystery of a traveling umbrella salesman that had been in the area when Pauline went missing, who had been sentenced to five years in jail for a rape. However, no one knew if he had been involved in any of the crimes or Pauline's disappearance. 
One source said he was close to Pauline's family and even ate breakfast at their home the morning she disappeared. He was reportedly close to Pauline and would often tell her that one day he'd find her a good home in another town. He was arrested, but was released after police checked his alibi. Without any new leads or hard evidence of foul play, the police officially concluded that Pauline had wandered away and couldn't make it back home before she froze to death. Many disagree and believe that it was in fact a cold-blooded murder. Whoever the killer was, they got away with killing an innocent two-year-old girl and probably the murder of the man the skull belonged to. Yet, the tragedy doesn't end there. A month after finding Pauline's clothes next to the decomposing body, her parents took the girl they thought was Pauline back to Cherbourg and left her at an orphanage. Pauline's parents finally accepted that the body must have been their little Pauline and had her buried in their local cemetery. Pauline's parents said the girl from Cherbourg never spoke or acted like Pauline. However, after a month at the orphanage, the girl began speaking the same Breton language as Pauline. She was also able to list off the names of Pauline's siblings and tell about the family's home and farm, leaving the question if she was truly Pauline or not. No one will ever know for certain, because she died two years later from a measles outbreak at the same orphanage Pauline's family abandoned her at. Strangers, what do you think happened to Pauline Picard? We would love to read your theories in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and check out our Unsolved Mysteries playlist. You won't be disappointed. Also, be sure to smash that bell button so you never miss a strangest video, and as always, stay strange.